All right, hello YouTube. It's been a long time since I last posted. I wanted to post a video about setting up Final Fantasy XIV on Linux. Um, this is something I'm pretty pretty uh, impressed with, and also it's a game I'm very very fond of. Um, so big Final Fantasy fan. Final Fantasy XIV has been very fun, and a lot of people have been playing it lately because of all the people moving off of uh, Blizzard's World of Warcraft. So. Anyways, I just wanted to kind of walk through some of the steps that I use to set up and configure my system so that others might be able to take advantage of it who are looking to run Final Fantasy on Linux. So, first of all, uh, if you're going to install it, you can use the default installer, but you're going to run into a lot of problems that require you to manually tweak things post-install, and you're still going to be running into problems with their default launcher. Their default launcher is not very good, it's not Linux friendly, uh, and it erratically crashes. Part of that might be compatibility with uh, Windows, so it may not purely be a Linux issue. But uh, the first thing you want to do, I recommend going to Lutris and using the XIV Launcher. XIV Launcher is a custom micro launcher that's been created by a third party. It downloads the game like an order of magnitude faster than the default launcher, so that's one huge reason to get it. But the other big reason is that this Lutris install it's dead simple. You just run it and you have a working game. So highly recommend it. It's uh, spectacular. Uh, it does some things for you. You can see in this script. So like it handles the installation of your dependencies. It handles all the other, other steps that might be necessary. Um, so uh, I already have it installed. So I'm not going to go through and run the installer on this video, uh, especially because it would take a very long time to actually finish. Uh, but I did want to walk through some of the other steps that I do post installation so that I can get this working. Uh, first of all, if you're going to be executing things, uh, so my, my prefix is usually uh, home, games, PC, FFX, ID, Lutris, right? Uh, that just gives me a folder to work with that I can access and it standardizes it because I have a lot of different games I play on my system. Um, if you wanted to run commands in that prefix using the installed version of Wine for that, you can use the Lutris runner uh, in this path. So the home.local share Lutris runners Wine and then Lutris 6.10 uh, is the current version that's installed with um, Lutris's installation scripts. Uh, if you need to back up your installation after it's been installed and you don't want to ruin a you know, 40 to 60 gigabyte installation, you can use the cp-a command in order to create a copy of it. So if you'll look in here, I've already created a copy of mine, so I can walk through these steps and show you that not only um, can you do these other steps, but then you can also restore yourself back to a working state if you break something. So this is recommended. Uh, the other thing is, is you can launch Lutris uh, from a terminal uh, or a game in Lutris from a terminal without having to go through the Lutris menu every time. Uh, I find this convenient and I use these sorts of tricks all over the place in my system. Um, so in my case, I've created a bunch of different things in USR local bin. In this case, I created uh, FFXID, which literally just does this right here uh, and it runs the game. Uh, the game is based on its title and while this isn't something I don't know if you can access this easily in the Lutris menu, you can use SQLite, and this might be going a little far for some people, but SQLite, uh, PGA, and then you do like dot tables. You can see the tables in here, select star from games, um, and you'll see like this is the title of the game. Um, it's not exactly the easiest thing to figure out, uh, but you could also do by ID, but then you have to figure out which ID it is if you have multiple games installed in Lutris. So anyways, uh, yeah. That's the installation process. You run through Lutris, you click the install button, it'll install. You might have a couple of other dialogues that come up, but for the most part, once it's installed, when you run the game using Lutris, it'll launch the F XIV launcher. Uh, the XIV launcher is also really nice. Uh, like I said, it order of magnitude faster for downloading the game. Uh, it supports one-time passwords, also supports automatic login. Uh, and Steam service counts, so lots of different stuff you can do here. So if I just log into my account, <clears throat> And it'll launch the game. So I have a ultra wide screen, so that's why this is queer dimensions right now, but just so that you can see everything that's happening. Um, so that's that's how you launch the game. And it works great. Now, if I did like Shift F2 with G Shade, it'll open up the menu and I'll show you that in a moment, but you'll notice that it's not there currently. I can't open it. So I'm just gonna exit this. So my game is installed, it runs, uh, and I'll show you some performance metrics in a moment as well. Uh, but let's walk through the next step. So the next step is actually to install G-Shade. G-Shade is really cool. It gives you custom shaders that allow you to greatly improve or augment the default uh, 
uh, shading behavior of the game. <laughs> and it, it can make the game even more beautiful than it already is, which is very impressive. Um, so the installation process, you clone the G Shader installer, uh, which is linked from their website right here. Uh, and then you run the G Shade installer .sh script, uh, but you're gonna need to set your exports for your wine prefix and also for your path to get the correct wine version. So we'll do this, and then we'll do this, and then we'll do G Shade installer. Uh, not found, you wanna create it? Yes. This doesn't take very long, it's very fast. Um, <clears throat> So some of the presets that I recommend, this is the list of the ones that I really enjoyed ordered by kind of the recommendations. Uh, Espresso Glow is currently one of my favorites to use. All right, so this is gonna auto attempt, so we'll do F, we'll do Y, do Y again. Y again, I don't know if it's doing twice or what that is, but anyways, it worked, so now we're good. Um, so, if I were to launch the game now, I have a working copy of G-Shade. That literally is all it took. So, let me go ahead and launch the game again, and I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, so, to open the menu once the game is launched, you use Shift plus F2. Uh, the menu can stutter quite a bit when you're in the game, so bear with it. The results are definitely worth the stutter. Uh, We'll go ahead and, oh yeah, so you'll see the stuff at the top appeared. So it says uh, for Shift F2 to open the menu and it has like a tutorial, which is useful. Um, I didn't really pay too much attention to it when I was using it, uh, but it's basically like telling you what you can do, how to access it, how to change the dimensions. You can drag and drop this. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and go to FFXAV, Espresso Glow, Shadowbringer Standard and it'll apply it, and then we're gonna do continue, finish, and we're good. Now we can Shift F2 to close it again. So yeah, Shift F2 at any point, you can open it up, you can turn it off, you can change the shaders, and it all changes in real time. So you can actually see the graphical difference of the game while you're playing it, and it's really, really cool. Um, once I get the last step of this, I'll log in and show everyone uh, kind of what it looks like. So the last step is uh, Advanced Combat Tracker, and this is probably the most uh, controversial part of this guide. Um, it does work on Linux, it does take some tinkering for the best results, and it's far from perfect. But, uh, it is something you can use to improve your own gameplay, it's technically against the Final Fantasy Terms of Service, it should never be used to judge or tell their other players they're playing poorly. Use it at your own risk. Um, by default it will run, but only memory parsing will work, and it's supposedly inaccurate, I guess the DOTs and other things that are happening for other players. So they do recommend to get network uh, parsing working, and it doesn't work by default. Network parsing is a little bit more touchy. Uh, so you can get it working. There's this awesome script, uh, FFXID tools. You can run this setup script and it will generate some bin files and apply the patches for you. Uh, or you can try applying these manually if you're comfortable with that. Um, so in this case, uh, to explain what's happening is, uh, let's see, we're gonna go into I guess it doesn't matter where I do it from, but yeah. So Lutris installs runners and they are like isolated wine and, and other tools that you can do. So like there's multiple versions here. So I'm gonna copy my Lutris script, kind of the same, or my, yeah, my Lutris runner, kind of the same way I recommended copying the um, game folder. Uh, so this way, if I break something, I can restore it. Uh, also, because Lutris wine versions are potentially shared between other applications, if another application in Lutris uses 6.10-7, it could potentially conflict and create bugs and break your other games. So it's recommended to back it up, maybe restore it or change to a custom version if you're going to be um, tweaking this. Uh, but in general, I'm gonna go ahead and do this export, which sets uh, the wine, so if I do which wine right now, It'll show me the one that's in this install path. Then we're gonna export this um, R path. So this R path, uh, what it's doing is it's going to allow us to override the library config path. Um, when you use set cap, which is going to add permissions so that the wine binary can parse the network and trace things through the network. When we do this, uh, it requires root permissions because you're basically giving it elevated permissions to parse the network and uh, it will tell the wine binary, or for some reason, the wine binary will ignore the LD path. Um, as a result, 
you would use this uh, R path to overwrite that. So by setting this R path on these specifically, these three binaries, you're going to override that before we apply the set cap, and then the set cap will give it elevated permissions. So we'll do this first. Oh, I need to install patch shell. Oh, long day. <laughs> All right, so now let's try this again. So that'll apply that. So if I were to do print our path now, and I'll do this on these real quick just to show you. So print our path will now show you that it has that value. If I did line 64, I think by default it is either empty or it has like some origin relative path set up. Um, so anyways, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this. Uh, and then we're gonna apply the set cap, which requires pseudo privileges. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do that to all three of these. And again, you can test this with get cap and get cap does not require root privileges, but if you do if line and there we go, so we see it has these. All right, so once these changes have been applied, what happens is, is when you run an application with Wine, Wine64, Wine Server, it will have elevated permissions to access certain things that it couldn't previously. Um, so again, if you needed to restore it, you would just rm-rf the current folder, and then you would copy cp-a from the back to the default path. Very easy to restore from, kind of goofy, but uh, the other thing you'll want to do is you want to install uh, ACT. So the scripts will install ACT inside the, they'll embed it into the uh, one prefix. I just copy the zip folder onto the FFXIV path uh, above the Lutris path, and then I have this folder that I can just run. Um, it's just it's for my own purposes, I like it that way. You can script launching the ACT using something like this. In particular, ACT requires you to use Wine64 because it works in both 32 and 64 bit mode, and it will default to 32 bit mode when you try and run Wine, which will usually conflict because I don't think most people are running 32 bit systems. Um, if you are, maybe you have to do it that way. But uh, you also need Wine Async because it won't let you run one with Wine Async and one without it, and by default, the Luther's version uses Wine Async. Uh, so I will say the overlays in this are not perfect. Uh, the um, default plugin didn't work for me, so I don't see anything. Uh, they are not flawless. They can crash when you try to load them a few times. Uh, they can introduce significant latency depending on your configuration. Uh, I highly recommend using a multi-monitor setup so that you can keep the um, display separate. But if you need the overlay, it can be configured, but it's gonna take some tweaking depending on your desktop environment. So in my case, I'm using OpenBox and I have to make a modification to RCXML where I tell a specific application uh, that starts with advanced, which would be advanced space combat space tracker.exe, and then the title overlay. You can usually get this information from the window by using XProp and then clicking it. Uh, but uh, this is something that you name it when you install the uh, overlay plugin. So we'll do that in a moment. Um, but basically when you're using uh, open box, you need to make these changes and it doesn't work if the game is taking up the full dimensions of the display. So even if it's in uh, windowed mode, if it's taking up the full dimensions, it will not put the uh, layer on top of it. Uh, but because you're making it non full screen, technically it can have a performance impact as well. So it can further degrade performance of the game. So again, uh, pros and cons, I don't know if I can say it's good or bad necessarily. But uh, let's launch the game now. And then I will also launch uh, ACT in a moment as well. Oh. And kind of again, like I was saying before, uh, I have another script to launch ACT right in here um, so that I can just do this with uh, GM run. So let's launch this. Uh, also, all these things are part of a repository that I've created that configures a Linux uh, for you. It's an Arch Linux install. Um, so let's get into the game and show how this works. <clears throat> oh. While we're in queue, I will go ahead and launch ACT. Okay, 
So now that ACT has launched, the first time you launch it, it usually asks, oh yeah, here it is, sorry. It'll ask you some questions, like it'll do it through a wizard. So do you want to set it up? You're going to have to click to install. Sorry, I have two desktops, so the pop-ups are happening on the other one. All right, plugin has been installed and added. Oop. All right, so if we go to the plugin section, you can see it's been installed and added. Again, um, the default overlays I don't think work for me, but we'll find out in a moment. So I'll go ahead and hide these. Hide these, because I'm going to install another plugin that actually works for this. Um, now, if we wanted to see if the plugin itself is actually working on network mode, if you click this, it'll pop up in the corner telling you. So in this case, the pop-up happened on the other screen. There we go. So this right here says, hey, it's able to parse. Uh, if you don't get a message that says that that's okay, it will still work in memory only mode, uh, but like it says, it's not accurate. So you may end up being off by a few numbers. Um, so let's go ahead and install the overlay plugins. We'll do get plugins, which opens up another pop-up. Of course, that's off screen again. All right, so we want the FFX ID plus others overlay plugin. We're gonna download and install and enable. Let's see, open up another plugin window. Goodness. <laughs> Since I'm on a controller, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that real quick. Since I just did a reinstall, I haven't loaded my configuration, so it doesn't know that I play on a controller. All right. So this is now installed and enabled. So I'm gonna go over to here. So we got overlay plugin. Oh wait, hold on. Initializing, okay. forgot to finish the wizard for the initial setup. Okay. So let's uh, fix this out. I just moved the game window to the other desktop so that I can go through this without having to click through it again. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and do get plugins, download and enable. <laughs> well, this is a new error for me, so I'm not sure if I can solve this right now. Let's see. Oh, that's initialized. Good. All right. So in spite of those pop-ups, it says it's technically working now. So if we go over to this overlay plugin.dll, we can go to new and we can create one. Now, I specifically called mine overlay. Um, you can call it whatever you want, but you might have to tweak the uh, config that I created, like the uh, application advanced overlay layer above. Um, I don't have that set up right now, so I will change that in a moment. So if I do Ember Overlay, it should pop up if it's working, but it may also not if it's crashing. Again, the reliability of this is questionable at best. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. We'll try disabling and re-enabling, seeing if this works. Ah, yep, okay, so it launched it on the other display, so here we go. So this is the overlay screen, so it'll show you that it's here. So then we're going to uh, need to make some changes. First of all, I'm going to drag this over to here. Again, this won't be perfect. I don't have a configured HUD, so there's you know, going to be some weirdness here, but let's go ahead and go into RBI config openbox rc.xml, and I'm going to add that line here. So this is interesting and for a few reasons. Uh, so when we add this here and we reload, so we're going to save and quit, right quit, and then we're going to do a reload of the settings. So at this point, technically, if I have the overlay up, oh, you know what, I think the overlay just disappeared. Yeah, it crashed. So uh, this is why I was saying sometimes it gets really weird. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Came back up. Cool. Okay. So if I click the game, because the game is in full screen, it'll disappear, right? Uh, if I have this up, which is not the game, it goes over it. Um, oh, that's what's happening. When the game is not active, the overlay will go into a disabled mode. Um, so it automatically hides itself. That's what's happening. So if I click back into this and then click back here, 
it may come back up, or maybe it's waiting for me to be in combat. Anyways, I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, if I, so you saw that when I had the window open, it disappeared. Uh, if I go to system configuration and I go to windowed, and then I set it to the resolution that I have for my desktop or for my game, which is, let me just open AR and R and figure this out. So this thing is a 3440 by 1440 for resolution. Oh yeah, so you saw the window came back. Uh, 3440 by 1440, okay, we'll apply, okay. So now this is technically windowed, and because I have this menu bar at the top, uh, it doesn't see it as proper full screen, which is why this is still on top, okay? But if I right click this, undecorate, and then use a hotkey to bring the game window back to maximum, now the overlay disappeared, okay? But if I change the height to say uh, 1439 pixels, because that's not actually full screen, now it does this because it's not full screen. I'll use the again hotkey to move it into the uh, screen again. There we go, okay. So now it's like one pixel shy of the uh, top, so you can barely see a pixel's worth of content down here. But because it's not technically full screen, the overlay is actually on top. Again, this is the weird tweaks that you have to do in order to get this to work in Linux, and it depends on your desktop environment. And this is, again, why I recommend using a second monitor so that you don't need the overlay. You can just keep the ACT running on the other monitor so you can see what's happening. That also means that your, you know, environment is going to be less cluttered. Let's go ahead and work to a place with a training dummy. Uh, I think there's some at Summerford Farms. They're kind of low level, but they'll work fine. <clears throat> I probably want to check. Do I have... Okay, that's fine. All right, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let's uh, get started. We're in combat, so you'll see it started updating and it's gonna show my DPS, right? I don't have my bar configured at all right now, so I can't do like full combos or anything. But you can see it's keeping track of my DPS, it's keeping track of critical hits, stuff like that, right? Um, if I wanted to, I can click this to shrink it and it will only show my character. So even if I'm in a party, it'll only show this, technically. I guess. I'm not entirely sure why it's showing uh, my chocobo still. But anyways, so you can see that it does work. It is showing you numbers, um, which is great. Uh, another thing that I can show you as well, since we're already out here, I'm going to reset that. Come on, Bogo, stop attacking it. <laughs> Companion. Uh, follow. into free stats, okay. So, uh, let's actually open up uh, G-Shade, and I'm gonna go ahead and close ACT since you've seen ACT now. Um, so, ACT can get overloaded if you're in a raid with a lot of people, uh, eight, eight party or higher, uh, you can get enough messages going through the network mode that it will tell you that it can't process it enough asynchronously. I haven't found a solution to that just yet. Um, you'll also notice there's a bit of lag right now, and that's probably because I'm not in actual full screen mode. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to full screen mode real quick. Um, border is windowed. <laughs> Sorry. Borderless windowed. Save. Yes. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and turn. Well, let me uh, zoom in. So you can see graphics fidelity and some of the stuff going on. So let's turn this to off, I think. Yeah, there we go. So let's do off. So you'll notice you can immediately see the difference in graphics quality when you do that. Uh, if I were to select, let's say, well, let's do, there we go, Nanako. Let's 
got a good one in here, right? Gameplay folder, I think. Okay, yeah. Neko gameplay, and we'll do adventure. There we go. So it takes just a moment to update. Uh, the first time you run it, it'll compile all those shaders, and so there's that glitchiness. Uh, but now you'll see, like, it's incredibly vibrant, like, quite a bit different than the default. Um, so it probably is also being affected by the fact that I'm screen recording right now, so that's almost certainly having an effect on the uh, performance. Uh, but uh, normally I get 60 FPS without a problem. So let me go ahead and exit the game real quick. And I am going to add Mango Hut real quick so I can show you that as well. Let's load up Lutris. Uh, the reason I'm loading a Bluetooth is because you can add environment variables through here. I'm going to go ahead and add an environment variable. Mango HUD. This is a HUD that you can install that's kind of like a FPS HUD and performance HUD. Um, you can install it using uh, Arch's AUR, their community repositories. So now that that's added, I'll close that out. I'll launch FXIV again. This will be the last part of this tutorial, so I'm hoping I kept everyone with me. Uh, and feel free to comment in the video if you have questions. I usually am pretty responsive. So. <clears throat> so yeah, when you have Mango HUD open, if you look in the top corner, it shows me the GPU load, CPU load, and FPS. Uh, so right now the FPS is all over the place. Probably again because I'm recording. Okay, yeah, so standard 60 FPS once it's actually launched. Uh, we'll get into the game and we'll see if it remains at that while I'm doing some things. And I'll also change it back to the Espresso Glow because I think this is just a little bit different. But yeah, you'll see the Mango Hide overlay over sits on top of that, so it's not perfect uh, to have both of those going, but you can drag this out of there if you needed to see it. Oh, I didn't want to maximize it. <laughs> So yeah, anyways, so now I'm back into the Shadowbringers Espresso Glow. I'd also show you like an output to show you how fast it finished compiling it the first time. All right, yeah, so 60 FPS, no real issues. This is the uh, up and down of the milliseconds for the game. Let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I wish I had a configured bar. We go somewhere busy, like uh, Limsa Limsa. <clears throat> so this tends to be a pretty populated place. You'll see a bit of uh, dipping. Uh, I haven't configured this yet, so it still has like everyone appearing. Uh, usually you have it so that you have a limit to the number of players that appear. So even with this, it's anywhere from 30 to 50 FPS. Uh, and once it stabilizes, it's holding pretty close to 50. Uh, if I go to like system config, is it this one? Yeah, let's do normal. So yeah, once we set it to normal instead of maximum, now it has no problems managing 60 FPS. And again, this is on a 21 by nine 4K monitor, so. <laughs> Uh, I am using a, a RX 5700 XT, so it's a pretty powerful graphics card, relatively modern, but um, gameplay-wise, again, it works phenomenally. This game runs really well on Linux. Can't recommend it enough. I hope a lot of people have a chance to try it. So that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and again, comment if you have questions. I will try to answer them.